This is a notorious M2 MacBook Air in base configuration with super slow SSDs. But me and my wife decided to buy this one to go to our vacations and trips. So is it worth buying in 2024-2025? So let's find out. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you are watching No Limits On channel. So me and my wife decided to purchase the base M2 MacBook Air with 8 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of SSD with one NAND chip, that is why it's a pretty slow SSD compared to the competition. And uh, me and my wife are rocking the 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pros and those are very heavy to get with us to the travel. Uh, vacations or something like this because my wife does workshops, wedding workshops in Europe and we travel a lot. It's been like more than 10 uh, different journeys throughout the 2024 year and we did bring this one because it's like two times smaller and lighter than this one and we had only one machine with us not to carry two big laptops because we have a lot of stuff to bring with us. So this review is not really a review, <laughs> let me say it's more of my expectations and my real world experience about this laptop in terms of video editing on the go and also photo editing because my wife is a wedding photographer as well. So as a disclaimer, I'm not gonna be going through a ton of benchmarks, it's just my overall expressions about this laptop. Editor Oleg is here, so basically guys, I just watched the presentation of the new MacBooks with M4 and at the end of the presentation they said that the M2 and M3 MacBook Airs will get 16 gigabytes of RAM as a stock option, so if you did plan on purchasing uh, like in the United States, for example, and you'll have the option for the same price of a 16 gig as a stock option, just go purchase it because it'll be a much snappier machine and it basically resolves the main drawback of this machine. But I'm really uh, surprised and shocked how Apple managed to keep the price and uh, to raise up the uh, RAM capacity. And I re I'm really speechless, to be honest. So what do you think about it? Just drop a comment down below. Let's continue the video. So starting off with the size and weight, it was a real relief when we started bringing this laptop to our vacations and trips, because compared to the 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it literally seems like two times smaller and lighter uh, version of a laptop. So uh, here is the comparison of the size and weight between this one and this one. But guys, it was a real pleasure to carry this one compared to this one. I didn't bring the stock charger, I did bring my own gun charger for three USB Type-C ports, so I could charge my laptop and both of our smartphones as well as some other accessories with a USB type A. So all in all my setup was super minimal. I did also bring the USB type C to the SD card adapter and that's basically it. Two SSD discs for my wife one and for myself one as well. In terms of battery life, I did compare it to my M1 Pro 16 inch, which was one of the best computers on the market in terms of the battery life, and it's more or less comparable. I didn't notice like major differences. When you just surf the web, when you do light video watching or something like this, it lasts for a very long time, but when you start heavy editing, like 4K 50 frames per second, It'll last for about four hours, which is not bad as well. In terms of display, after the mini LED technology of the M1 Pro 16 inch, it's not as contrasty, let me say. You can definitely see the gray areas when you watch a movie, for example, and you do notice the notch a lot more because when you have black wallpaper on this laptop with mini LED technology, you don't see a notch whatsoever. I cannot basically see it. I forget about it all the time. But right here you do see it. It's not a huge deal. The uh, diagonal is also pretty nice. It's fine for video editing even. I do have like uh, uh, the dock hiding right here. And I also do use special shortcuts for my Final Cut Pro to get the best of uh, my real estate in terms of the screen size when I add it. And also guys, it's a 60 hertz display. I wish it was 120 or ProMotion because I really got used to 120 hertz on this laptop. The speakers are so-so because of the very thin body of the laptop itself. We have no bass and compared to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is like a godlike sound, uh, this is not even comparable, but it's okay. I mean, it's fine for watching a movie on the go or something like this, but nothing too crazy. By the way, the trackpad is not that small and I did feel really comfortable working with this. 
this trackpad but the keyboard is a bit more clunky and plasticky at least in my opinion guys because on the 16 inch it does feel a bit more soft and gentle and overall more premium this one does feel a bit cheap but it's okay in terms of the ports for on the go purposes it's more than fine so i had my adapter usb-c to sd card and also my ssd drive so i had both ports uh, plugged in and also i had my magsafe as well and i was charging the laptop simultaneously so not an issue for me but if i had to use this laptop on a daily basis as my main working station i would have to buy like a thunderbolt dock with three extra thunderbolt ports for connecting a lot of uh, like peripherals like like different ssds etc and the overhyped topic of a slow ssd speed here is the ssd speed of the macbook air m2 base version and here is the ssd speed of the m1 pro base model 16 inch of course the difference is huge but you only notice this difference when you have a lot of stuff open and you have a lot of swap on your computer if you use one application at a time like final cut or photoshop or lightroom or your browser with not a lot of tabs open it's fine but if you want to use it with a ton of stuff open like multiple tabs in your google chrome or safari or excel like uh, lightroom plus photoshop plus final cut open it will be lagging like crazy so don't use this machine for this type of work just buy a 16 gig version instead Let's talk video editing. So I've been editing on this machine mostly our wedding workshops from Europe. So we had like a full day wedding workshop. At first we had like 300 files after the workshop, 4K50, H.265 codec and around one and a half to two hours worth of footage. I did uh, copy this to my external SSD and then from the SSD I drop everything to the timeline so we have like a one and a half hours of 4K 50H.265 codec from my Sony ZV-E1 and basically what I did is cutting the garbage out, also color grading it straight away and also stabilizing the footage so I had like 30 minutes of clean good footage after and I did export it as well. So throughout this process I didn't have any issues like lagging or stuttering. It was pretty smooth experience and the export time was longer than on my M1 Pro for about two times longer. Uh, no matter they have similar encoders built in but you have to use the GPU a little bit as well and we had about 8 to 10 to 12 gigs went to swap so it's uh, much slower because of a slower SSD but overall it's not like a critical thing because during the editing process it does work pretty flawlessly. The only thing that was slower during the editing process itself is the stabilization. So if I want to stabilize a clip in this computer, it takes like two seconds. With this, about three seconds, let me say. So maybe 50% slower. But other than that, guys, I'm okay with waiting for like 10 minutes longer for the export time but the editing process itself is really good when I have only one application open. If I do open like Safari with 10 tabs or like Chrome with 10 tabs or something else, it will be very slow. So don't open a lot of uh, applications, just use one and you'll be more than fine. And to conclude about the video editing, I'm more than fine with this performance on the go. I don't need more performance basically when I'm on the go because I have a lot of time when we are traveling by train from one city to another in Europe, for example. So if you are using it with one application open and on the go for light video editing, then I did a little interview with my wife, who's a wedding photographer about this machine for photo editing and she said that it's more than fine compared to the M1 Pro 16 inch because she has the, the same base model 16 inch M1 Pro. Uh, the only things that she noticed was that the display itself didn't have the proper contrast levels that she got used to on the mini LED display right here. Also, she said that it's a little slower in terms of importing the files to Lightroom catalog, like 50% slower, but during the editing process, it's more or less the same, maybe 10% slower than this machine. So all in all, she had pretty good experience while uh, using only one application, of course. Then she had to export the files and the export times are much longer, like two and a half to three times longer than on this machine. But she doesn't really care because she can go drink some coffee during the export. The main thing is to have flawless experience during the editing process itself. So she doesn't have to wait while using the brushes or while using some I don't know, different stuff in Lightroom. I'm not a photographer. I don't do editing of the photos, but she said that it's more than fine. 
And also she did notice that when you open uh, like a separate app, like a Photoshop and a Lightroom, it does get slower. So she uses only Lightroom, then exports the files, and then she uses Photoshop. Whereas on this machine, she could use uh, Photoshop while exporting from the uh, Lightroom, of course, and also while opening a lot of different tabs in Chrome and Safari simultaneously, also using a lot of swap memory, but this has pretty fast SSDs. That is why she didn't notice any stuttering or lagging. So to conclude guys, if you have the same goals like traveling lightweight using one application at a time is okay for you and you don't want to use it as your main editing or video editing or photo editing machine, this is fine. I mean it's not crazy good, it's not the best laptop in the world, but I did purchase it for around $850 here in Russia and it was a good deal. It was brand new by the way. But if you want to wait for half a year or more, there will be an M4 MacBook Air with six 16 gigabytes of unified memory as a stock option and this would be a much easier uh, choice because you'll have no issues with the swap memory you'll have enough unified memory you have faster chip um, better neural engine for apple intelligence etc etc so if you want to wait and then spend a little more cash for the newer m4 i would suggest waiting a little bit so if you did enjoy this video smash the like and subscribe button and hit the notifications bell and right here i have my full video editing review of the m1 pro 16 inch base model in 2024 basically right now <laughs> so see you in that video guys take care bye